The X2 compact cook system has been Fire Maple's all-time bestseller. For good reason. High performance, relatively low cost. But now Fire Maple has decided to upgrade their X2 and they've come up with the X2 Pro. If you're interested to hear my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending out the X2 Pro so that I could share it with you. So the short backstory is Fire Maple did reach out to me a few weeks ago and offered to send this unit to me for testing. This has not yet been released for sale on their website, at least at the time of the making of this video, but it will be shortly. And they wanted to send units out like this to uh, reviewers for their comments, their feedback, so that they can continuously improve upon the product. So that's have one of the pre production models that I'm going to be sharing with you. So if the X2 is already the number one seller in Fire Maple's lineup, why would they want to improve upon that or why would they want to make changes? Well, that's what we're going to go through today. So what I'll do is I'll bring the camera down a little closer. I'll go through the specifications for this unit, but of course, you know, I did bring out my X2 so I can show you some side-by-side -side comparisons between the two and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. Before we look at the X2 Pro and I go through its specifications and the improvements over the original X2, I'll first show you what all came with it. So this starts with the stuff sack, of course. Now, everything is inside of the unit but you start by releasing the handle with this little nub and wire fold it over it does lock open into that position take the lid off put it aside we'll come back and look at each of these items or the components a little bit more closely in a few moments time this is a support for the gas canister greatly increases the stability of it when it's in operation this is an optional or and additional pot support. It can be used if you want to use pots, not the one that came with, but something larger, or if you want to use fry pans, and I'll show you how that works on a moment. And then of course the burner unit itself. I'll come back to the pot in a minute. So there is the burner unit. I'll just give you a few close-ups and then I'll reach for my spec sheet and we'll go through the specifications. Overall weight, all included with it in the stuff sack, would come in at 19.8 ounces or 560 grams. Height top to bottom is 8.1 inches or 207 millimeters. Diameter across the top 5.3 inches, 134 millimeters. Now as far as the burner itself, and of course I'll be showing you that again in a moment. It is a 700 or 7500 BTU or 2.2 kilowatt hour burner, which is, I'll say it now, it's identical to the one in the X2. There's much the same with just a few differences. Now the Fire Maple rates the fuel consumption on this at 158 grams per hour. I think that's a little bit difficult to judge for me, but I will tell you uh, what I have as far as testing goes in a moment's time. All right, let's go over what Fire Maple say are the changes, improvements over the original X2. And one of the first things they did was to drop the weight of the entire unit by 70 grams. So that's not insignificant. That's a fair amount of a weight loss. And I looked at the two of them side by side, and I'll bring the other one back into the picture in a moment and I think I know at least where some of the weight savings came from. Now that's one of the things. The other thing that they wanted to do was change the look a little bit to make it less plasticky to improve the look or the aesthetics of it and uh, yeah well uh, I'll let you pass pin on that yourself. So one of the other changes is right here in the pot. So one of the things they've done is they've changed the handle quite a bit. In fact let me just show you the original handle and then I can show you the new one. Now they both still have the locking ball on a wire right here. Nice feature of course. Unlock it. This is the original X2 and what you can see is that this is a much more robust handle system and it locks into place very very well. Has a little push button right here to unlock it to close it back up again. So and it does have plastic on the handle. Yes it does. And so that's how the X2 would work. So let's look at the X2 Pro. Similar in function but again Pop the button over, fold the handle over, and lock it into place. It does not have a button lock to keep it in place, but, uh, you know, I'll let you decide whether or not you feel that's an important feature. Now, the other feature that they've changed with the pot itself is the lid. Now, the lid on the X2 is made of Triton. It's semi-transparent. You can see through it, not that you can see a lot when there's steam coming out of it. It does have a silicone knob on top for lifting it off, so that works well enough. It doesn't lock on or stay 
on very tightly. And, I, you know, may, that may or may, may not be a bad thing. It depends if you want it to stay on uh, when you're pouring or trying to pour uh, liquids out of it. One of the things that I commented on in my original review of the X2 was that there was just one hole, steam hole, steam vent, if you will. And I commented that it would be nice to have seen a series of them for straining so you can pour water out of this if you had pasta or rice or something like that and be able to pour it out or to control flow if you just wanted to pour it into say a pour over coffee maker now of course yes you could just tip it and you can do that with a little bit of uh, uh, you know practice of course and do a good job but here is where fire maple brought the new lid into play and to start with it's not made of triton it's actually made of a semi-flexible plastic type material it still does have the silicone knob in the middle but here are a couple of improvements number one this will lock on to the top of the pot more or less you can see there's a groove around the here and this will lock on if you want to push it down it stays on pretty tight right and it has a little piece right here a little extension to lift it off it has three drain holes now great improvement for pouring liquids off if you want to do some straining and just a little lip right here and my guess is and in practice it works okay is it kind of directs the flow as you start to tip this this will drip its direct the flow so it doesn't dribble downwards it works is all I can say. I can't say it's a, you know, a eureka moment, but it works, okay? So uh, the lid is a definite improvement on this unit for sure. Now, what I want to do is just bring the other pot back in. I'm going to take the lid off. It's the easiest way to do it for both of them and show you where they made a few changes on the pots themselves. So again, here is the original X2, and I want you to take note of the slots on the outside of the heat exchanger. You can see the fins of the heat exchanger inside there now. And you do have to have some type of an exhausting around there, so when the flame is coming up, spreading out, going through the heat exchanger, it does have to be allowed to move outwards, otherwise it's going to choke itself off. So there are the slots on the X2. And here are, they're not slots anymore, they're quite huge, huge windows or openings on the X2 Pro. I'll have more comments about that in a moment, but one of the things I believe is this is where they were able to reduce some of the weight, at least in the pot, was by opening up the exhaust around the base where the heat exchanger is. Now, let me bring the two burners into the picture. Start with the original X2. It's nice that this one is orange so I don't have to worry, you know, try to figure out which one is which. They both have piezoelectric lighters. You can see where it is next to the burner right there. There's the push button down there. They're identical. It's identical burners is what it is. So that's the two of them side by side. Now visually uh, here's one of the things that Fire Maple tried to do which was improve the look of it, the aesthetics of it, to make it less plasticky looking. Personally I had no issue with the old one at all. and But there is the addition of a metal ring on the new one, presumably to make it look stronger. Uh, yeah, maybe, but there is extra metal on this, and I'll tell you, it actually increased the weight, so that's part of it. Now, part of it does have to do with safety and function, and let me show you this underneath. So here's the original X2. You can see where the Lindell valve connection is. That would go on the canister. Here is the underside of the X2 Pro. Big change right here. Now there is this ring around the Lindau valve, and that was done for safety and strength and durability, because now that will seat on the, the canister, and I'll put the canister on in a minute so you can see it, around the outside of the canister to give it more support from lateral stresses. Yep, I can absolutely see that. You can also see that there is more metal underneath here with the supports going out to the far sides of this. And again, that metal ring. All told, it adds up in weight. It does feel, it not feel, it is a little bit heavier. I'll put the weight differential in the video description if you're interested. So I'm not quite sure where they got a weight savings between the two of them, when in fact there's actually more metal in this one. Now, I don't know that there was an issue with the original X2. But if this is safer and stronger, yeah, I'll take that. I don't, I don't see any reason why not to. So that's the two burners side by side. Now just let me put the canister on so that you can see how that would work with this rim around here. Start the threading. Here we go. 
on nice and snug and hopefully I can get in there tight enough that you can with the camera that you can see where it seats right there so it's stronger from lateral forces again I don't know that there was an issue with the original X2 but uh, yeah I believe there is a safety improvement there all right now let me just show you one last thing before we move on and that is how the extra pot support so this is what you get to support pots that are larger than the one that came with it or fry pans and you start by taking the four legs and fold them inwards and what happens is is you're, you have these uh, notches if you will little slots turn outwards and they're going to go on top of the burner and you can turn them and they lock into place so there you're ready to use this now for pans or larger pots all right, before I give you my uh, thoughts on the X2 Pro, I wanted to talk about some testing I did side by side with the original X2 to see if there was any difference in performance. And the reason I did that testing is, well, when I first looked at the X2 Pro, that's when I noticed the cutouts around the heat exchanger fins. Once again, let me bring in the original X2, and you can see how much more metal there is around the base, around the heat exchanger fins on the X2, as opposed to how much more open it is around the X2 Pro. Now here was my thinking. I wondered if, if when there were some lateral winds, if it would affect the performance of the X2 Pro. So I had to start by doing base tests between the two of them. So I did some just basic boil tests, no wind. Then I repeated the exact same test over again with wind artificial. It was a fan that I actually have a measurement for the speed of which, which I'll, I'll give you in a moment. And I recorded those results. So let me do that now. Now what you need to know first off is that the Fire Maple website gives a different, perfor a different performance result than what I'm going to share with you now. So this is true for both the X2 and the X2 Pro. And they say that you can get a half a liter, 500 milliliters, two cups of water, to a boil in one minute 42 seconds. I could never get it to a boil that quickly. Now yes, there are a number of factors that can affect a boil time. To start with, how cold was the water when they started? Certainly mine was tap cold and that's what I started with. So I don't know what they started with. It's also a judgment about what is a boil time or what is a boil. Uh, for me, I have to see a rolling boil. Now it's not necessary to get to a rolling boil of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius in order to uh, purify your water, you can pasteurize your water at a much lower temperature, certainly by 175, even down to 155, depends on where, what sources you're looking at. So the problem is though, what, how do you know what the temperature of the water is by looking at it, unless you have a thermometer, which most of us don't carry in the woods, I don't. Um, so we look for a rolling boil. And that's what I was looking for. And that's how I measured mine. I suspect they didn't bring it to a full rolling boil. So they got a minute and 42 seconds. With the X2, the original, I got two minutes, 56 seconds, and six grams of fuel used. Now that's turning the, uh, the valve wide open. You can vary the times, the boil times, and the uh, fuel consumption by going to half open if you want to. Uh, again, I was looking for a side-by-side -side comparison. So wide open that's when I got two minutes 56 six grams of fuel so guess what I got with the x2 pro two minutes 56 seconds six grams of fuel so as far as a standard test the two stoves are, are the two units the, the whole the entire unit came out with exactly the same performance side by side and that's pretty much what I expected but then I put a fan in front of each of the units and I have a little wind meter, anemometer, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it correctly. And I measured the wind that I got from the fan and um, let's see what was the wind here. 10.9 uh, kilometers per hour or 6.7 miles per hour and uh, on my meter it registered at 3 meters per second. So that's the math if you do it out. Big difference in performance this time, X2, the original, took four minutes, 26 seconds, and seven grams of fuel to bring two cups of water to a boil. That wasn't unexpected. If you add wind, you are gonna slow the boil times down. The X2 Pro, four minutes, 56 seconds, and eight grams of fuel uh, burnt. So it took, what, 30, 
more seconds to bring two cups of water to a boil? Yeah, no, I know, that doesn't sound like a whole lot unless every gram of fuel matters to you. Not the time, but the gram of fuel. So each boil, if I was doing this in windy conditions, each boil would, would take one gram of fuel more to bring the water to a full temperature. Okay, I may be just you know, looking for small things here and differences. Functionally, they are very close to the same. There's not a huge difference between the two of them, but there is a bit of a difference. So I just wanted to answer that question. Now, let me bring the two of them back into the picture and I'll talk about my opinions on the changes that were made between the two units. So by the way, the X2 Pro will continue for sale for quite some time, or excuse me, the X2 will continue for sale for quite some time on Fire Maple's website before they fade phase it out in, for, in uh, favor of the X2 Pro and I was told the reason for doing that is they wanted to get customer feedback on the X2 Pro and incorporate any changes before they get rid of their all-time bestseller. Some of the things I really liked about the X2 is the handle. I really liked the stability of this handle. It's just very solid, locks in solidly, is not going to uh, move or you know open up on you un unintentionally. Uh, yeah, I really like that. The lid, yes, I think I would go with a better lid. There's nothing wrong with the Triton lid. In fact, I had intentions of actually drilling some more holes in this. I may or may not do that. Everything else about the pots, with the exception, of course, the vents across the bottom are the same. So let me bring in the X2 Pro. Here's my first impression when I open this up. I did not like the handle, and I still do not like the handle. I do not see this as an improvement over the original. It doesn't lock in securely enough for me, and it remains rattly, as you can see here. And I put that comment right back to Fire Maple the moment that I tested it. Now, if it's just a aesthetic thing, I don't like the look of it, I don't like the feel of it, that would be bad enough. But I am a little afraid that it's not going to be as strong in an actual use as well. So to start with, let me bring the other one back into the picture. The handle, the plastic, that's really nice and comfortable to hold on to. It really is. There's no sharp edges. Uh, you know, it just feels good in the hand, nice and secure and everything else. Not so with the X2 Pro. That is actually uncomfortable in the hand. Now, you're not gripping onto it really hard, but you are holding onto it like this while you use it. And I can actually feel that digging in my hand. Okay, I'm complaining about small things here, but there is a difference. I do not see this as an improvement. Now, here is where things got interesting. Let me just put the two of it on top of the stove. Okay, now this is gonna to have to be simulated, but this is locked on. You can see it's locked onto the stove right now. And what I found is, is when the water came to a boil and the metal expanded some, which is of something that's gonna happen, quite often they get a little tight. I don't always lock it on for that reason. Actually, you can see the issue right now. You have to kind of push it now. Again, it's a little tight when you, when the metal is hot, but uh, th that's not the issue. They, you just grab onto the, the base down here and you push the handle sideways. It's in pushing the handle sideways that I feel like it's gonna give on me. It just feels like it's moving too much in my hands. Can you see how it moves like this? Uh, maybe I'm being fussy and maybe I just like the X2 better, but that's my thoughts on it. Now, it hasn't failed on me and I don't want to suggest that it will fail, but I do not see that necessarily as an improvement. And again, here's something else that hasn't happened, but again, could happen. And that is if this is full and you it'll hold up to a liter of water down to the, the measurement inside and I'm tipping it, I'm a little worried that if I get to a point, it's actually going to unhook like this. Hasn't happened yet, but then again, I don't usually boil a full liter of water that I have to pour out, so there's not that much weight inside of this. Small things, maybe, but uh, they are my impressions on it. When it comes to the lid, I see this as a huge improvement over the original. You don't have to lock it on, but you do have the option of doing so. You have the extra vents for straining, that's a great improvement. You have the lift part to take it off, also an improvement. And yeah, there is some improvement in flow control when you're pouring, if you're pouring with the lid off on with this little bit of a lip. Okay, those are my thoughts on the X2 Pro compared with the X2. 
It's still a good stove, but in my opinion, I prefer the original X2. But now I'm opening it up to you. What are your thoughts on this new X2 Pro? If Do you like it? Do you see room for improvement in it? Put, the, put all of that in the comments section. Of course, all the specifications as well as any links that I have will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.